Good morning, everybody. It's Drew from Atlantis. And in today's how-to video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to install an aqua basin for a poundless waterfall kit. This here is from Aquascape. This is our Aqua Basin 45. So the dimensions, 45, 45, and 16 tall. In here, this structure, this basin, holds just about 100 gallons of water. It is supported structurally through the molding process underneath here, so we are actually able to lay and set boulders. Uh, but in this application, it's gonna be smaller stuff, so it'll more than be able to handle the weight of rocks because we want our waterfall to come and end right about here. This is our halfway point. And then the water will have plenty of room coming down to then filter through all these slots and back down to where the pump sits below. So this is our access panel. This is where the pump will sit. We have to drill a hole through the side, put a bulkhead fitting, and then our pump connects and the plumbing runs directly around to the top of the waterfall. But when setting your aqua basin, a couple things you need to factor in. Where that access panel with your pump will be in relation to our outlet. Keep in mind that most pumps come with about a 15 foot power cord, so you don't want to stretch that out and not be able to plug your pump in. So this was an old pond. We're going to be utilizing this hole, actually pulling it forward slightly and then sinking the top of our basin right here about four inches below this grade. And we're doing that for a couple of reasons. It allows us to extend our waterfall this way over to about that halfway point, but then since it will be sunk a little bit below grade, we can use stonework and gravel to completely disguise this so you don't see it. Tree roots and things are not an issue for this. This is a heavy duty molded plastic, so we don't have to worry about putting underlayment under this. This will take care of itself, but we are gonna lay fabric underneath our liner up there for the waterfall. I'm gonna show you guys what we do to set up and get our basin plumbed and ready to hook up our pump. I've got a series of different attachments here. I've also got our Aqua Surge pump. This is the Aqua Surge 3000. We're gonna be running inch and a half pipe out of the back up to our spillway. But let me show you what's a little different about the way this pump looks versus how it comes out of the box. It's gonna have two separate screens on it. It's gonna have this pre-screen that's threaded onto the front here, and then it's gonna have this larger screen over the top of it. What these do, they serve as pre-filters to prevent any larger debris from getting sucked into that impeller, causing it perhaps to clog, to lock up, and then the pump overheat. So those two protect large debris from being pulled in, but we don't need that in this application because this basin and pump our undergrounds covered by gravel and rocks and no large debris will get into this pump. But this here is something we need and this is what we call our low suction attachment. What this does, it allows me to get the intake part of our pump almost to the floor of the basin here. Now what this is good for is allowing almost the entire volume of water that sits inside here, about that 100 gallons, to be able to be recirculated through the system. If the pump did not have that, we would lose use of about an inch and a half, almost two inches of water in the basin here. So this allows us access to all of the water in the basin. Again, when this is set in the ground, it's level side to side and front to back. So it maximizes the water available to us to be using and recirculating. And then, what I need to do to connect the plumbing is using an inch and a half bulkhead. I've lined everything up, how it's gonna come out of the top of the pump, using the fittings that come in the box with your new AquaSearch pump. So we've got this kind of contraption here, which will then ultimately connect to our bulkhead. Now I use the series of these connectors. This one is uh, the collar spins on the fitting here, so it will allow us to be able to take this pump out, service it if needed, or for winter time, some people like to bring this inside. So I lined everything up here, and I made marks on the side here where I need to drill our bulkhead fitting through the side of the wall. So I've got my hole saw ready. I'm gonna drill that out. To 
to get your bulkhead through the sidewall of here. Again, I had everything lined up. I made marks on the side. Using a two and a half inch hole saw, you just need to drill through the side, okay? And then that is the right size for this inch and a half bulkhead to slide right through. Now, one thing to keep in mind, which is very, very important. So this bulkhead here has a rubber washer on it. That rubber washer has to be on the side where the water will be, which is inside our basin. So you put that through there, bulkheads are reverse thread. So lefty tighty, not righty tighty here. So I'm spinning that left. Gonna get that nice and snug by hand. And then with my channel locks, I'm just gonna give it just a quarter turn further. These can be over tightened and you can actually break the internal part of your bulkhead, which you don't wanna do. So just a quarter turn past hand tight is all you need. It is pulling that rubber washer real tight against the side here of our basin. That's watertight, so we are almost finished with this connection. So using my channel locks, I got that collar onto the bulkhead nice and snug. Now all I have to do is attach our male pipe thread adapter. So this is adapted to inch and a half slip fitting. I did put a bead of silicone on there just to make sure that there is no water that's gonna sneak out through our threads. And then this is a regular thread on here, so righty tighty. We'll get that in there nice and snug. Again, with this one, you don't wanna over tighten because the inside of that bulkhead is tapered a little bit. So you tighten it too much, you'll actually cause it to crack and then it's no longer watertight. So it's hand tight right there. I'll just do a quick little quarter turn with my wrench. That's done, ready for that pipe to be glued in. Inside is all ready, so let's get this in the ground. So now we've got this in, it is backfilled behind it. We've basically got our grade right to the lip and top of our basin here. I've also put in an inch and a half elbow here so we can run our plumbing straight up that way behind to where the spillway will be back there. So this part here is basically just using our, uh, our hot glue. This is actually preferred for these type fittings using Flex PVC. It creates a chemical bond that actually uh, almost fuses the PVC to the flexible uh, pipe there. This way it's a forever hold, no leaks, no separation. Sets in about 30 to 40 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead, glue the pipe, glue the fitting, slide that in there, and this will be ready to be trenched and backfilled to get up to our grade. We are at the point where we are at the top of our waterfall. It's not completely rocked in yet, but before we finish that, we have to connect our spillway. Here we have our diffuser, okay? There's an opening on the front and then it's plumbed here with a built-in bulkhead. So how this works, the water is pumped into here and then it's hitting this diffuser part and then it actually slows it down and sends an even flow both ways this way. So in other words, if we were to just put the pipe straight in here, it would be shooting out like a fire hose. But what this does, it gives us an even distributed amount of water flow. And then what we're gonna do, we actually set this below grade and do stonework in front of it. And using our waterfall foam, we actually create like a miniature biofalls where the water has to well up and then come over a spillway stone. So what I need to do is make sure my liner is super clean and super dry. So the reason I say that, because we are going to be cutting a hole in it, which you would think holes are leaks. So what we do, we use our six inch cover tape. I'm gonna cut like a six by six piece. I'm gonna prep that piece of liner over there. I'm gonna dry it real good, both sides of it. And then using our primer for the liner, which we would normally use when seaming or patching a hole, that's essentially what this is gonna do. So the last thing we want is to cut a hole in this and as we tighten this thing here 
to start twisting that liner because that will, without a doubt, cause that section to leak. So we put this piece of cover tape over where we make our hole just as good insurance that as we tighten that bulkhead, it will not lose water. So here I have a clean section of liner. I've got my heat gun here. I'm gonna actually use this to really dry it out, make sure that it is nice and clean and dry. You can see as I'm running this heat gun, I don't wanna to get too close to it, but it is drying it off. I'm then gonna use one final piece of clean rag, get that nice and clean before I use our primer. And then I can stick our piece of cover tape right over the top. It'll make a nice permanent bond. You wanna apply it here and then Try not to touch it with your hands because this stuff is very sticky. And then pretty quickly it sets up and becomes tacky. So I'm gonna then take my piece. You wanna make sure the backside, everything is nice and flat. You want this to adhere with no bubbles, no folds. So we've got a nice solid second layer of, of protection here. So we've got our piece of our cover tape. It's firmly attached to it, it's perfect there. So now we've got that double layer protection. So as we tighten that back side of our bulkhead on the diffuser, it's not gonna wanna twist that liner and open up any kind of area where water can escape. So next step is to very, very carefully and with a brand new razor blade, trace the opening here for your bulkhead and then very, very carefully. You need a very precise hole. You don't want it to be too big. A little small is okay. Okay, the stressful part is done. So I've cut the hole through, I cut it small because I can always trim off this extra bit of liner, which is exactly what I have to do now. Um, if I cut it too big, then we're not gonna be able to make a good seal. So on either side of this fitting here, on the back end here, I have a rubber washer. On this side here, I have a rubber washer, but I wanna make sure that this sits super flush to the other rubber washer on the other side of the liner. So I just have to very carefully trim a little bit of this away. Then that will allow the second washer to sit flush on there. And then our coupler screws on and squeezes this and makes a watertight connection. Okay, so now I'm in the back part of it. I've trenched in my plumbing from all the way down there to the back side here. I have now just enough to connect into the fitting because it does slide in about another inch and a quarter. So I've got plenty of room here. All I have to do now, put my glue on the pipe, put my glue on the fitting, connect them, hold it for 30 seconds. That'll set just about that fast. Then we can backfill this, start building the top end of our waterfall and then get to edging. So this is really, really coming together quickly. I can't wait to turn this one on.